Hello everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. These are five going home alone at night stories that I hope can scare you awake. Ahead you will be hearing about escaping a robbery and possibly much worse, strange encounters in the woods while walking home alone at night, and more let's not meet and ghost stories that will keep your senses alert wherever you are. So. Stick around, grab your snacks, and before you begin, are you sure you locked all your doors? This happened a while ago when I finished the shift and was ready to go home. The company I work for has a bunch of different sites and the shifts are never in the same place or at the same time. This night was a quieter one at a place with only one football pitch, so I was working on my own. The place itself wasn't really the worst part. The worst part was the location. This place is located in a small park that is covered by huge walls on three of the sides and has no illumination apart from the place where I was working. The way to get out of there is even worse. You have to walk a small path with about one meter of space to each side of you before you hit either the place's fins or a wall. Walk this until the end, turn left, and go under this train bridge through a small arch with no lights. Then, once you're done with that, walk for about three minutes in the dark until you reach a small road, which is usually completely deserted at night. Sounds fun. Usually, we try to leave the place at the same time as the last team who was there, but this last team left the whole place in a mess, and when cleaning up after them, I lost them. I thought it would be fine. I'm a big boy, I can handle myself. I just didn't know what was coming. When I finished cleaning up, I closed the gates and locked the coded padlocks. These aren't so easy to lock from the outside, so when doing it, and with my back turning to the outside, I started feeling uncomfortable. When I turned around, there was no one anywhere to be seen, so I shook it off. I walked down the path and under the arch. You could fit a football team in there at night and no one would notice until they started moving. And yet, there was no one there. I crossed with no problems, but then, in the dark, I thought I saw a small orange dot light up to my right. I stopped suddenly, held my breath and searched the darkness for the dot to figure out what the hell I was seeing. There seemed to be nothing at first. Then. After some seconds of looking, a small orange dot showed up around 5 meters from me. It lit up intensely, and then started going weaker. That's when a second one appeared near it, and then a third to my left side. I took a small step back as I tried to let my eyes adjust, and when they did, my stomach dropped. There were three shadows smoking and closing in on me, slowly so they wouldn't make any noise. The park was so dark that I wouldn't have seen them if not for the cigarettes and them starting to move. I stood there for a bit, deciding what to do because there would have been no one around for about three minutes even if I ran. As I stood there, trying to somehow go invisible and deciding on what to do, these guys kept slowly walking closer to me. So I took a breath, and when I thought it wouldn't be expected. I started running as fast as I could. The train station was my only chance. When I started running, at first I could see their shadows just standing around like they didn't understand why I started running or something. It was only after one or two seconds that I started hearing their running footsteps on my heels. I took a quick look over my shoulder, almost losing balance because of the sudden drop between the footpath and the road. I could make out that one of them had a knife in his hand, so I could only guess the others did too. This didn't last long. At some point, still a bit away from the main road, where there would be people, I could still hear them on me, getting closer and closer. My coughs were starting to hurt at this point, and my lungs felt like they might burst. I could barely breathe, but I kept thinking just a little longer, just a bit more. Then, I turned the corner in the street and the main road came into sight, about 30 steps away. My energy came back and I ran as fast as my legs would allow me until I reached the main road, with its big corner shop right next to me. I spun around, getting ready to still see them running at me. There was no one there. 
I looked at the empty street, baffled. Did I imagine this? Did they maybe give up while I was running and I didn't notice? Then, I saw this guy appear at the end of the street, where I had just turned the corner. Black hoodie and tracksuit pants on with this creepy smile on his face, like he was threatening me for having escaped. He took out a decent sized blade, looked at me with it in hand for a minute, giving me chills all over and then slowly swiped it next to his neck, showing me next time they would slice my throat. I didn't go back there for a while. I reported this to my company the next day and they took me off the shifts there for some time and started doubling up on shifts to keep people safer. I don't think anything else has happened to anyone until now, but the security around that place hasn't gone much better. So, it's only a matter of time. When I was younger, I used to spend almost every summer I could in England at my uncle and aunt's house. They have two boys, my cousins, and I'm a male too, so we'd spend the entire summer on adventures of every kind. We would literally spend all day outside if we could, and I absolutely loved it. Since they lived in a small town that didn't have many big roads or cars going around, we were pretty much free to roam around at will, as long as we were home for lunch and dinner. After dinner, we would usually go out and play football in a nearby grass field and would only be back home by bedtime. That night though, we decided to go somewhere else. On our way out, football in hand, my eldest cousin mentioned that he had been to this place that was really, really dangerous, full of dangerous people. I asked where this was, because he had a habit of making things up, and he said it was a kid's park, about 15 minutes away from the house. I had seen the place during the day, it didn't seem that dangerous, and that's what I told him. We were about 13 years old back then, with our hormones kicking in, so everything was a challenge. So when I told him what he was saying didn't seem that bad, everything changed. We had to go there. We turned around, dropped the football at home, and went the other way, our meanest looks on, as mean as a 13 year old can seem, and we were off. On the way, my cousin kept describing what we were going to see and saying that I would shit myself seeing the place at night, and I didn't really believe him. Until we got there. The road just before the park looked eerie at night, with only one line of light posts on one side that were completely swallowed by the tree branches which wouldn't let any little bit of light through. Even then, we kept going. When we turned the corner though, my heart seemed to slow down and I saw how right my cousin was. The place was not what I was expecting a kid's park to look like at night at all. Since this was a really big park with a lot of grass areas that wasn't meant to be used at night, there were no lights anywhere, which created this dark, moonlit, sinister area used by loads of grown men as cover for excessive drinking sessions or smoking anything. The smells coming through the entrance of the park were unbearable. Of course I didn't want my reputation to be shattered by saying that would be a piece of cake and then turning tail and running as soon as we got there. So I was the first one to take a step into the park. My cousins followed me in and at first we went unnoticed. It was when we were about 10 steps in that one of the closest groups of men started noticing us. One of them had a huge dog, or at least it looked huge for us at the time, and they started calling us over. This was when I did, indeed, shit myself. I still had my pride though, so I did what I thought would be the coolest way to go at it. I turned to my cousins and said, see, not that bad and started walking a bit faster towards the park entrance we walked through, ready to go home. My cousins followed, probably surprised at what I had just said, but wanting to get out of there as fast as I did. Behind us we kept hearing these men calling, some sounded drunk, others just laughing, and we just wanted to get out of there. When we were finally out and ready to just walk back home and stay there for the night, I could finally go back to my brave self. I thought I could but about halfway home 
we noticed one of the men we had seen at the park was walking behind us. He was quite far, so at first we thought we were just being paranoid and just kept the conversation going. But then we started noticing he wouldn't leave. There were so many houses and my cousin's was the last one on the street and somehow this guy was still behind us, coming closer with every step. He was keeping his head low, taking quick steps and just looking like a creep. We whispered between ourselves what we were going to do while we accelerated our pace and we decided we could try to cross the woods leading to the back of their house. We knew them really well, because we usually spent all day in them, building hideouts and trying to camouflage them so we could confuse people walking the path by making noises and then hiding, so we knew where to go. As soon as we turned the corner we dove into the bushes, found the path we were looking for and started following it. The guy wasn't that easily tricked though, and he must have realized what we had done. So he started shouting behind us at the hole in the bushes that we used to get into the woods and saying how he'd get us. My heart was pumping, my legs were shaking, and we couldn't wait to get home. Luckily, their fence was just around the corner, so we climbed over it, into the backyard and went into the house pretending like nothing had happened. We picked up some snacks, said hi to my uncle and my aunt, and went up to the bedroom to read Goosebumps books and talk about what had just happened. We didn't want to tell their parents because we knew we'd get in trouble for going to a dangerous place like that, but that was not the end of it. The next day, my uncle and my aunt decided they wanted to go out for the day, since it was the weekend and they wanted to try this new roadside pub they knew was now open. We had the choice between staying home or going with them. Usually we'd have stayed home playing computer games, but for some reason, that day we decided to go. When we got back for lunch, the place was trashed. Someone had broken in through the fence we climbed the night before, smashed the glass doors from the garden to the living room and thrown everything around inside the house. We called the police and they found that nothing was taken, so it was all really weird for them though we knew what they were there for. They were there for us. I'm not sure if this is a ghost story or just an odd thing which happened. I was following a city cycle route that night. It was just starting to get dark and the sat-nav on my bike took me to a cycle path covered by trees and bushes on either side. I got a bad feeling which I attributed to the darkness creeping in and the alleyway style cycle path. I stupidly thought that if I cycled fast, I'd get out the other side quickly rather than find another way. Cycling along, I spotted two bikes coming towards me, a very distinctive looking man, and a girl approximately early twenties, dark hair, cycling close to him. He said hello as we had slowed to let each other pass safely. The girl just looked ahead. But she made me uneasy, which was absurd as she seemed like a regular girl. I continued along and heard a blood-curdling scream. I was terrified but had to continue. I couldn't figure out where it came from. I then passed two girls who looked wasted, so it might have been them. I was cycling hard to get through the alley and I slowed down once more to pass another guy on a bike. And what looked like the same girl from the first cyclist I passed, riding just behind him. I didn't say hello or smile this time. This time she stared at me with such a haunting smile. She held the stare all the while until I passed. Coincidence or not, it was the strangest journey home. I cycled extremely fast after that encounter. I'm a female, 21 years old, and live with my parents, my brother and my dog, Lucky. Lucky was a new addition to the family, we got him from the shelter not too long before this night, and we made a family pact that every night, one of us had to walk him. The others could join if they felt like it, but each of us had to take a turn until all of us had. That night, it was my turn and no one wanted to join me, so I geared up, put the collar on Lucky and took him outside. The leash was on and Lucky pulled me out the door like his life depended on it. 
This was a quiet area, so at night I usually didn't find a lot of people. Since we were new to this, we didn't know everyone yet. And I'm quite shy at first, so I would just pick up my phone and check for different things on the internet. Meanwhile, Lucky did his business. I would just try to avoid other people from feeling like they could come and have a chat. However, that didn't stop this guy. When I was by the side of the road at the turnaround where I would usually just turn back and go home, I was watching a video of a game I used to play. And this guy just walked around the corner, almost running into me because of how hard his dog was pulling him. His dog bumped into my leg so hard that I almost fell. He apologized over and over again, saying that Spot, his dog, didn't mean to almost run me over. I knew how dogs could be, so I didn't mind. I said it was okay, and dropped down to Spot's eye level, to pet him and say hi. I noticed his caller said, Ralph, with a phone number underneath. I know what you're thinking now, and trust me, it makes sense from the outside, but at the time I just thought maybe Ralph was the guy's name so that people knew who they were contacting when they called the phone number if the dog ever got lost. I finished petting Spot, Lucky also smelling his butt and surprisingly going very friendly. I said goodbye and started going on my way. This guy though, persisted, hopping after me and starting to ask me questions about Lucky. How old was he? When did we get him? What his favorite food was? It was getting very specific and a little scary. I didn't want to seem rude or anything, so I kept answering his questions and trying to end the conversation as I walked ahead of him to try to get rid of him, but he just wouldn't stop. This is my note for everyone listening. When you're trying to leave and someone won't let you, just be rude. It must have been like five minutes with the guy yapping at my ear, but it felt like an eternity. At some point, I was done with it, so I told him I had to run home to get to my parents because my mom would need my help. I said it was nice to meet him, and turned to start jogging back home. Dumbass Lucky almost got me killed that night. When I turned to run and pulled on his leash for him to follow, instead of just doing that, he just crossed me from behind and pulled my right arm towards my left. Hard. This made me spin around, lose balance, and end up on my ass. The hit on my bottom shot a jolt of pain up my spine and I fell into a half laughing, half crying spurt of noises. I saw the guy approach and I thought he was going to help me up. Instead, he let go of Spot's leash like he didn't have a care in the world for the dog, picked me up by my neck and lifted me to his eye level. I started choking and I had no idea what was going on. Why was he doing this? I couldn't speak because of his grip. I tapped his hand to let him know to loosen up, but he just lifted me more, his eyes looking absolutely demented and his face in a wide green I hadn't seen on him until then. All I remember thinking was that I was dead. My legs wanted to run, kick him or anything. My lungs wanted to scream. But somehow, everything got jammed up, and I could only think that was me, done. The guy came closer to my face, licked the middle of my face from my mouth up. I felt his tongue slide between my lips and started crying while I tried to fight him off. He whispered in my ear that I was now his, and that there was nowhere to go. That's when I heard another voice, shouting the name Ralph, coming closer and repeating the call. Then, I heard a, there you are silly dog, followed by a, hey what the hell are you doing? I was starting to lose my vision by then when he suddenly let go of me. My legs collapsing when I touched the floor and I was down gasping deep for all the air I could get, now crying frantically and holding my throat while hearing a set of footsteps going away and another coming closer. Someone was shouting, are you okay? Sitting me up and checking me roughly all around. Thankfully I was okay. It turns out that this guy, whoever he was, had stolen Ralph, the dog and was using him to try to get close to any girl alone with another dog. That girl was me. And the disgusting idiot didn't even take the time to read Ralph's nameplate. My parents took me to the hospital after, to have me checked out. Everything seemed normal apart from the shock and the stress. 
We also made a report to the police, though until now, they never found him. I avoided so much looking at the creep the entire time that I couldn't even give a good enough description, though nothing else like that had ever happened around there. I haven't gone out with Lucky alone since then, and I don't think I will for a very, very long time. The place where I used to live was the end of our road, and was actually where me and my parents moved to when I was about four, for a very good reason. The woods that opened up into our street right next to our house led straight to the school that would be where I would go for a good amount of the coming years. This seemed like a great thing for my parents because it meant they could walk me to school, taking a stroll of about 10 to 15 minutes each way, and when I was older I could do this by myself. From what they were told, loads of kids did this, and loads of them would still do it after my story. The area was a really nice suburb, where most families had good careers, so it was exactly how you might imagine it in a movie. Loads of nice, clean, decent sized homes, with nice cars at the entrance, and pretty relaxed families who would have each other over for barbecues and so on. Everyone knew everyone else. There was only one house that had been empty for ages, to the point of decay. This house was in a bit of an unfortunate situation because the owner was an old guy with four kids who died suddenly, alone, without writing his will. This meant that the house was left to no one specifically, which led to years of discussing who it would go to and the house just being left to rot. This house had two other houses next to it, one on each end, one of which was my friend Patrick's house, and the back of it led to the woods that we'd go across to get to school. Due to the state of the house, we loved to come up with stories and horrifying legends about it. We all knew we were just making things up, but with a kid's imagination, everything becomes real. One of our friends would always talk about how this one time he went inside the house all by himself, and when he was in there alone, he heard footsteps coming down the stairs and this shadow of a hand with really long fingernails was showing on the wall. That's the part he would say he ran out of there. I wouldn't have blamed him for running, but never believe him. I decided to believe him a little more, though, after what happened to me. One day, when we finished school, I was meant to head home by myself. Usually me and Patrick would walk together, but that day he had a family dinner on the other side of town, and his mom picked him up to go buy some new clothes to wear and I was left alone to walk by myself. I didn't mind the entire way, apart from the ten steps we had to take across the back of the abandoned house. We were able to see the second floor rising above the fences with its broken windows and moldy ceiling, which only made us more terrified of the place. We would make up stories of ghosts as we walked past, and like always, after I couldn't take the panic rising inside me imagining all these horrible things, I took off running. As I did, I heard someone calling me by name, clearly and loud and asking me what was wrong. I stopped, my blood frozen, and turned around slowly. This tall man was standing there, with a half smile on his face, seeming confused by my running. I hadn't noticed him before. He asked me again if I was okay and what was wrong. From a distance, I told him the house made me uncomfortable. He asked me why and I explained that there was a ghost, and that the house wasn't safe. I don't know if you'll believe me on what happened next, but I know what experience I had, and that won't change. When I told him about the house, and the ghost of this guy who had died horribly inside it, he laughed out loud. So loud that it surprised me into taking a step back. He didn't believe a word I said. Then, he stopped laughing, and looked at me fondly. What he said next kept me awake for a week or longer. He looked from me to the house and back to me, and then he said, Nonsense. It's not scary. It's just my house. I didn't quite process what he said at first, and I just followed his gaze towards the house. When my heart thumped into a stop, I looked immediately back at him with a what leaving my mouth, and there was no one there. The man was gone. I looked around in panic to see if he maybe had walked into the trees towards the other side, but there was nothing. It was like no one had even been there with me the entire time. I turned around and ran, 
not stopping until I reached my house and locked all the doors and closed all the blinds. I waited for my mom to get home and when she did I told her all about what happened. Of course she never believed me, and even though my friends at school seemed to, no one after that ever saw anything like that again. I think, to this day, the house is still there, left abandoned because the guy's kids can't decide what to do. I don't think he meant any harm, so I feel bad for my reaction now, but I don't think if he appeared to me again in the same way, I would have reacted any differently. Whatever his reason for showing up to me like that was, I just hope he managed to find peace by now. These were five going home alone at night horror stories. I hope you enjoyed them, and if you did, please leave a like and comment with your favorite scary emoji. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and check out our other videos and playlists. I do one minute horror stories as shorts, which you might also enjoy, especially if you like a chill at night in bed. I hope you're not walking home alone tonight, and if you are, when you get home, make sure to lock all your doors.